Hello people, e kale e de kabo suri to yi. E shete mgo wala le oni. That was me thanking you for watching us tonight in my native dialect, Yoruba. Oru komi ni oluwa damilola ibitwe. And you're welcome to your favorite primetime television show, Ways. It's our season break special as we round off the year and mark our fourth year anniversary. I want to highlight why I love Ways and the impact it has had on me personally and on my journey onto TV by answering 10 personal questions about ways as it fits into my life. Yeah, why do I think ways exist? Well, in my opinion, ways exist to educate and address the everyday events as it affects the society around us and at large. So yeah, my personal mission in life is to be a better version of myself at every time and in every season. And of course, yes, ways definitely aligns with my purpose in life because on this show, I have literally watched myself grow in stature and it has been a very beautiful experience. Ways also avails the constant opportunity for me to learn and develop my mind. I mean, and that's something I'm really big on, trust me. Ah, uh, my favorite ways moment, <laughs> that would be when we had Gloria Olufeko on the show. Although I wasn't even scheduled to co-anchor that day, but then I watched it from home and I could resonate with it totally. Sometimes I don't even want to be mean, I'm not even lie. But yeah, so I'm the internal control officer and client relationship manager for Parallax Consulting Limited, who is also the parent body and the production company that produces this show. So my job cuts across all departments as my role is to ensure that all policies are followed, all members of staff are carrying out their duties and deliverables are being delivered as at when due. Also, to manage a good relationship between the company and the clients while also understanding their needs and ensuring they are met. I love my job because it makes me improve on interpersonal relationships and a great sense of diplomacy. Trust me, I've had to learn serious diplomacy on my job, so I'm really happy. Uh, what am I most proud of? Well... I think I'm most proud of myself. I'm most proud of my growth this year. It feels like it's been a really long and eventful year and a lot of growth has taken place in terms of letting go of what no longer serves me, pushing through and beyond my limits, taking up new challenges, you know, getting better at conflict resolution, em emotional maturity, and so on and so forth really. But yeah, I'm very grateful for growth this year. Ah, <laughs> I'm very scared of failure and I'm very scared of uncertainty. I mean, the truth is that sometimes I think about it and I'm like, what if we go through all of this for nothing? But then again, I say to myself, eh, go for me, go for me, go for me, <laughs> really. I mean, but then it can be really crazy sometimes. But yeah, I mean, we pull through all the time. And yes, of course, uncertainties also make my already anxious mind race even faster. Well, we are managing. <laughs> What obstacles have I overcome this year? Ha, ah, okay. I think that that would be a battle against my own mind because, um, you know, having battles against yourself is one major thing that people really overlook these days. And yes, I'm really grateful for it because imposter syndrome is a real thing. And now I believe that I deserve all the fine things of life. So if I was to be elected president for a day, what's the number one thing I would do? So as cliche as this sounds, I would love to eradicate poverty in this country. So much so that poverty is no longer used as a political tool because poverty being used as a political tool has gotten us nowhere. And that's what all these politicians can just say, okay, I mean, because the people are poor, they can just, you know, do any amount because they know that if they give them just small money, because people have not been exposed to money before, once they see little money, I mean, you are literally their Lord and Savior. So I would eradicate poverty so much so that it is no longer a political tool.
All right, so media is a powerful force that influences public opinion, shapes national identity, and contributes to the overall development and transformation of a nation. Its role in disseminating information, promoting accountability, fostering cultural understanding, and influencing societal norms makes it an essential component of nation's growth and progress. Definitely. Well, how do I unwind? Ah, in different ways, Sha, but I'll mention a few. So I unwind by watching movies. I love to watch movies with my family, with my loved ones, because, you know, it gives us that sense of, you know, bonding. We're probably talking over the movie and stuff. I love the water so much. I have a, a love-hate relationship with water, Sha. <laughs> I'm very scared of water, but I love to be by the water side. I love to be on the water. I even love to be in the water. So, of course, I unwind by going to the beach, and I love to sit in silence. I love solitude a lot, so it works for me so well. My favorite show this year, I think I said it earlier, I'll say it again, would be when Gloria Olufeko was on the show. She spoke about the impact of communication on successful career and it's something I could genuinely resonate with. So in case you can't remember, watch this. I'll see you soon. Thanks for staying with us now. Effective professional communication is about conveying important information from one source to another. If um, that information is communicated clearly and effectively, businesses are most likely to run efficiently. Now, a worker who learns his boss's preferred communication and decision-making styles is less likely to make mistakes that hurts his advancement prospects. Managers are also more likely to advocate for workers who ask how to carry out a task properly or present multiple solutions for problems that may arise on the job in a clear and effective manner. Now, we all know that nearly every job posting, um, every job posting contains the word strong communication skills or effective communication skills. So today we are asking what is the proper communication and what impact does it have on career advancement? Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 380 Or you can also tweet at us at Wisho Africa one with the hashtag Wisho. So I'll bring in our guest in a minute. But I just want to hear your thoughts. Because you see, I've seen people, they will speak. They don't talk everything they want to talk, but you cannot make sense out of it. You know, there's one thing to talk. There's another thing for you to effectively communicate, communicate mm -hmm. that whatever it is that you have just said. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times there's always a mix up. And that's why you see so many, you know, people you, you are not able to um, um, assimilate or comprehend what the person, the other party is saying. And you always find conflict. Um, people are not able to also communicate effectively what qualities that they carry. I see some people when they talk, you really want to just go with them but some people that are even more skilled better um, um, excellent at what it is that they are doing because they are not able to communicate that you know they are not being promoted they're not being you know advanced in their careers so it's just a lopsided kind of thing yeah well let me hear your thoughts quickly then I'll, I'll hear EC then we'll come to well, the guest um you've said well it's very true that those are the things that we see today. There are some people who just, they, what they have to say is in their head. That's yeah. another thing. Putting it out there, putting it it's in a words. It's different thing. It's a completely, you know. I was having a uh, conversation with a colleague of mine, and he was trying to imply we were saying the same thing. But it was, we were using the same uh, phrase, but it was very obvious we meant it in different ways. You know, he says, life is give and take. Mm -hmm. And I say, and he was talking about giving, yeah, giving out either money, financial, or help or something. And I said, my ideology of life is an open hand would never lack. Mm. And he said, life is give and take. I said, we're not, we're, it seems like we're saying the same thing, but we're not. Mm. I'm saying this is how I've, I live my life. So I live giving not to expect. Mm. 
you leave given to expect. Mm. You exp and because you have expectations, you would always be let down. Yeah, yeah, I give and it comes because I do and not have expectations. Do you understand? And he kept saying, hey, boy, you're saying the same thing. I said, no, no, we're not saying the same thing. We might be using the same phrase, but we mean it in two different ways. Mm. So that, that is part of it. And we had this argument for almost 30 minutes. And ah. I just said, do you know what? You have time. I call it a truce, <laughs> and we'll get back to work. <laughs> so, you know, we went back to work. But, yes, it's, um, it's one thing to co uh, communicate, and it's another thing to communicate effectively, effectively. how Absolutely. the other person will be able to understand and be able to respond Absolutely. appropriately. Let me hear your thoughts, um, AC. Yes, um, I, NJ, I totally agree with what NJ says. But there's also something that also, um, I, what, there's something I also know that we should also take into cognizance, which is the saying that says that the type of adjectives you use makes me understand the kind of person you are. So if you have to communicate, you have to communicate effectively using the right adjectives. Also, you should also like use the words you want to um, the precise words you want to use to express your point of view, which was the problem uh, NJ and her peer had. And we also need to also look at the phrase which you, which you had, which was communication works for those who work at it. Yeah. If you do not work at it, if you do not go the extra mile to think about the message you want to pass across, think about who you are passing that message across to. And then you now sit down and construct what is that message you want to send to the recipient. Then there is a challenge. That is where there is miscommunication. And that is where you don't have a concise and clear communication. Mm. Um, um, what's it called? A clear and concise communication expressed immediately right there and then. Mm. So we have to also take all of these into cognizance because communication is about purpose, message, and recipient. Absolutely. So mm. let me bring in our guest, Gloria Olufeko, also known as Dr. Glow, is an international event host, an award-winning radio presenter, diction coach, voiceover artist, and communication specialist. As a West Africa Broadcast Media Academy certified MC and compare, Gloria has hosted myriad of events in Nigeria and other African countries. Now, she is currently the head of media and communications at Luminous Hills Investment Limited, one of Nigeria's pace setting providers um, of real estate solution. She's also the founder of TGO Media, which is a media and brand communications firm that caters to media coverage and hosting services for events. And she is graced our studio, looking all radiant in her yellow. Hi, yeah. Gloria. Hello. Hello, Angie. <laughs> Hello, 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 Thank you. Thank you. Let's Thank you. Let's just get that bright. out of the way. Very bright. <laughs> how are you? I'm very well. How are you too? Good. I mean, so Good. this conversation, yeah. right? Um, I think because again, we are, we are, um, we're in really tough times mm -hmm. right now, and mm -hmm. every single thing you do with either make you or mar you, absolutely, especially career wise and growth, mm -hmm. right? So it's important that we begin to touch on some things that we do uh, recklessly mm -hmm. or some things that we do not pay attention to that can actually change the trajectory. So I mm -hmm. remember going on Instagram and I saw a write up. If I, I had not said, I screen grabbed that write up, I said, Ooh, I think it's high time for you to sit down, look at the structure of how this person has communicated what they do, mm -hmm. and go back and replicate that for your, for your brand. Mm -hmm. You do a lot, mm -hmm. but you're not able to put those pieces together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like may, I'm far, far better from where I started, mm -hmm. but I'm still not where I want to be. Because mm -hmm. when I see some people write up, and they will just write all the... Ah, I said, but this thing this person is writing, I do much more than this. But how come I'm not able to communicate it right? Because again, it doesn't just stop at career in terms of like a work environment. Career even as an entrepreneur, career even as a brand, right? If you're not able to properly communicate what it is that you do to your audience, you are likely not going to grow. The difference between people, like you see all these um, brand influencers, celebrities, and all of that, go and check. They have gotten their communication excellently Absolutely. well. They are able to tell past the message clearly, so you do not mix, 
you do not mix any you don't have any mixed feelings about you know who they doing. are you know yeah. what they are about mm -hmm. and that's why you see that their growth trajectory is just you know there mm -hmm. instead of the ones that are you know today you are they're confused where are you you mm -hmm. know so i mean just help us out here because when we talk about pro proper communication um what does it mean is it about the speaking right or what mm -hmm. exactly is proper communication and how can it advance you know one's career oh great question and it's, it's such an amazing to be here thank you so much for uh, <laughs> inviting me i mean proper communication is you letting somebody know what your intent is and they get it mm. so it's a place of you not um miscommunicating so proper communication what's your intent what do you have to say and do they get what you what you have to say a lot of people just let people in on what they have to say this is what i'm all about but they do not wait. Do, does this person understand what I have to say? What's the feedback? And I, I loved what you touched on, Uwa. You talked about um, celebrities, influencers, how that many people know what these people stand for. They've been able to communicate their brand in such a way that people already know that this is what they stand for. This is what they do. Okay, so how can you communicate your brand as a person and then people are able to receive you and they understand what you're doing? It's proper communication. So from your intent to your passing the message and then the person at the receiving end understands clearly that this is what you're saying. And let's come home to career. I mean, when I started out, as event hosting, diction coaching, and all of that. A lot of people were like, Gloria, are you doing everything? How do we understand what you're doing, what you stand for? How do we understand that, oh, Gloria is an event host, or oh, Gloria is a diction coach? But what I was able to do was, I was able to intertwine everything to media, okay? So I host events, I teach you how to sound right, I'm still communicating. Hosting events, I'm helping brands communicate their message. Sounding right, I'm helping you as a person communicate properly. So people were able to get that way that, okay, Gloria is into the media. Mm. So as a human being, as a brand, how well are you able to let people in on what you're doing and they get it. So anybody watching me right now at home and you're wondering that how do I even allow people know or get people to understand that this is what I do? First off, be very clear. Know yourself what you're doing. Be very spot on. Carve your niche. Let them know that Uwa is, she's a TV presenter. NJ is a TV presenter. So when you see Uwa someday, probably at um, an engineering workshop fixing a car, you're asking yourself, Uwa, when did you start fixing the car? <laughs> <laughs> Do you dig? So let people, you yourself, you need to be very clear about what you're doing because when sometimes, when you're not clear about what you're doing, it's difficult to communicate to people what you're doing. Mm. So you, you need to, first of all, internalize what you're doing, have a niche for yourself. Let people, let it register in people's minds that this is what you're doing. I think that's the very first step to take as we go and I'll share more steps. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's, that's great. So um, when it comes to communication, I, I feel like communication in the workplace helps you a lot mm -hmm. because it gives you, it creates that confidence. Yeah. Because I've realized a lot of people, when you lack that communication skill, most times they're a bit more timid. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to lag behind. You don't want to be the one to, you're not, you're not up for giving suggestions or talking in public environments. You're very timid. What do you have to say? Oh, nothing, no, nothing. I'm okay, I'm okay. But um, when you're an effective communicator, you, you, you have that confidence, you know, and people tend to, there's, even with the confidence comes trust. You see some people and they're saying a lot of rubbish. You can, you're looking at them, you're wondering, but other people are nodding like, and you're wondering, what are you guys? It's, it's the confidence. It's the confidence that they're, you know, they need to spew nonsense. Yes. <laughs> and they're talking, and you're, and you're looking at every, and you're wondering, what is this person saying? But because of the way they're speaking, people are nodding and saying, mm. wow, even if she's saying rubbish, that rubbish makes sense. <laughs> but so it's part of it, you know, it creates some level of trust. Mm. And if, if I can speak freely within the work environment, it helps for a lot of things. It helps mm -hmm. with teamwork. Mm -hmm. It helps you be able to collaborate with your mm -hmm. team. And it, it goes far. Like, there are a lot of benefits mm. to it when you say within the workplace and everything. Um, like, for me, when I go, go to certain environments, uh, because you have the look and because you, have the, you can communicate effectively, 
most of the time I'm pushed to the front and say, oh, NJ, oh, no, represent do this. Us. You know, mm -hmm. represent us. I was, I was, so I'll push a question to you, but we'll do that after the break. For, okay. From what she said, right, yeah. how do people that are, like, in work environments mm -hmm. that are timid, yeah. how do they start to, you know, build that confidence? Absolutely. You know, we'll do that. But let's go on a quick okay. break. We'll be right back. All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, if you just tuned in, we're discussing proper communication and its impact on career advancement with Gloria Olufeko. Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to the right one eight zero three four six six three. You can also tweet at us at Wayshow Africa one or the hashtag Wayshow. All right, so Gloria, um, Gloria based yeah. on what NJ had talked about, confidence, yeah. right? Because I know that again, if you um, if you're knowledgeable and mm -hmm. you're able to communicate effectively, it gives you this kind of courage yeah. that you're always, you're not, you know, you're not intimidated. You, you can always hold your ground mm -hmm. in boardrooms, mm -hmm. anywhere you find mm -hmm. yourself, especially in the workspace. So mm -hmm. when someone is dealing with um, that um, timidity or whatever, mm -hmm. how do they even start? What's the process? Okay, I mean, great question. I've been asked this question quite a number of times. Gloria, I'm shy. How do I start? Most especially for event hosts. But well, let's bring it home. We are talking about career, career. development here. Um, I've, I have colleagues that are shy and they're really scared to voice out their displeasure. Probably they had a brow with the boss or with their colleague. And they're like, I don't even know how to approach my boss to tell them I'm not pleased with this. So what, what I would say is first start small. Start small with communicating, proper communicating with your colleagues. How do you share your thoughts with your colleagues? I know we might want to say, oh, you want to talk to your boss. It's my boss I'm having issues with. But first off, how do you communicate your displeasure to your colleagues? Oh, your, your, colleague, your colleague comes late to work and you're not happy about it. How do you let them in on it? Mm. Okay. So um, I'm not happy you came late to work. You shouldn't be coming late to work. Don't you think you should do this, do this better? So when you're able to start small that way, communicate with your colleagues, then you can grow into communicating with your boss and i'm sure that in every company there's hierarchy where you have the ceo and then yeah, your, your line, manager, line manager exactly your director so just before you jump the level of going to the ceo how well do you communicate with your line manager mm -hmm. how well do you communicate with the hr mm -hmm. now that's a lot of a lot of people make that mistake they do not have a personal communication with the hr it's very important looking at we were talking career right and that's why i'm making mention of the hr HR is, most companies, they do a lot of work in getting proper HR department because they feel like that's, that's one of the strongest departments of any company that will thrive. Mm. So how do you as an individual communicate? You have a relationship with your human resource manager. It's very important because many a times we find out that shy people will rather talk to the HR and then the HR does the talking to the boss, mm. okay? So ensure that you have and you build a personal relationship with your human resource manager. Start small. That way you, be, you begin to find your voice. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I like where you're going with the conversation because um, HR is quite, mm -hmm. quite important and Sensitive. very integrated mm. for any organization to thrive. Because yeah. if you have the wrong recruit as an HR manager, it's very likely that the, the companies will just go down. That's right. That's and right. again, when you talk about career advancement, those are the people that will then sit down to say, okay, I think this person is due for a promotion. Exactly. This person has displayed some level of growth and all of that. So it's, it's, it's quite, um, um, what's it called, important what you mentioned. Well, I was about even adding that. When you are shy mm. and your HR understands that you're a shy person, you can't speak for yourself. You mentioned just now that your HR would be the one to put a word for you mm -hmm. during promotion process that, oh, don't you think that we should take a look at this person's work? Because you have built a relationship with your HR. So even if your colleagues do not see a reason, your HR sees a reason for you to get that promotion. You're doing so well. You're not vocal. You're not out there. You're not outspoken. But you're getting the work done. As long done. as you're diligent exactly, at your work. Exactly. You're diligent at mm. your work. So your HR is able to put a word for you before your CEO, and then you, you get what you're looking for. All right, Isi, you have a question for our yeah. guest? Yes, totally, I do. Um, hi, Gloria. Hello, Isi. My question is, let's talk about in innovation in the workplace and communication skills. How important is this in what's the influence of communication skills to an effective innovation um, space in the workplace? All right, you see, I mean, 
when I, I understand what you mean by innovation is you have ideas, you have new ideas to share and you want to communicate it. Okay. So I'm sure that we have teams. Every workplace has a team. And so as you go on in your journey, your career, you will definitely be put into teams. Okay. As a matter of fact, I'm very sure that whilst you were trying to get the job, your interview process, the question they'll ask you is, can you, are you a team work? Can you work in a team? Do you know how to handle team teamwork? Player. Are you a team player? And then a lot of us say, yes, 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 we are team players. <laughs> okay. But then again, when it comes to you acting out that your attribute as a team player, it begs the question that you have an, you know, you have an idea to share. Mm. You have something to share. Can you share with your team first? Let them believe in what you have. Then when it is done, you cannot put it out there. So, you have an idea to share at work. You have something. Then another thing is approaching your boss. Mm. Many a times we have such brilliant ideas. Okay, let me give you an, me, an example. So I work for a real estate company. And I think about two days ago, the HR was trying to, um, um, were trying to um, employ a video guy to work with us in the media department because I headed the media department. And we had lots and loads of uh, entries applications and then i i just thought about it that okay why can't the hr just start the application process now instead of waiting for the window period of application to elapse for starting mm -hmm. and how did i go about communicating my thoughts and my idea to the hr i simply walked up to him i knocked his door hello sir um i think that it's better we start you start the um interview process now instead of waiting till the entire window period elapses. Why? So that you're able to thoroughly do a proper interview for everybody. You don't have quite a number of persons. You know the way interview processes can mm -hmm. be in Nigeria, mm -hmm. where you have a lot of people standing outside for interviews. But if you do it in batches, I think it's going to help us get the best. And I was mm, that's amazing, Gloria. Thank you very much for that. I'll look into it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you've been able to communicate first up with your team, and then you can also, your HR is, I'm very big on HR. I'm, I, I I'm, can see. See, ooh, I'm very big Go on even HR. Me now, I'm big on HR. <laughs> I don't know how many companies actually use HR a lot. No, but guess what? But guess what? So I have, I have, a, a, I have a consultant HR for my company. Okay. And she's been doing an amazing job. Right, it's, it's, it's a tough place to be because I see that she's the one that takes on all the burden, mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. the complaints. But you see that once you're able to put in that structure, and if you have the right person, like Absolutely. I said, HR has to be unbiased. Mm -hmm. HR has to be someone that has excellent, impeccable communication skills. Absolutely. Because you, you are the one that will be able to listen in on you know grievances and complaints and you're the one that will also communicate that to the superior yes. authorities yeah. and all. so it's a lot of things that you need to because you are managing mm -hmm. the people within the the, the, organization. the organization so yeah. if if if, the, if it is gotten wrong trust me it's not going to work but i was just going to ask that um there are there are people in organizations yeah. that have made it a point of duty that they would not see you grow Mm -hmm. right um they, they're oppressive you know in their style they are you know they're not those kind of people that are like team players they would rather want to be the one that to be seen that mm -hmm. i am the one doing the mm -hmm. job mm -hmm. right so if you are in that kind of an environment you know what do you advise how do how would you communicate that fear you know and if you're not able to communicate that fear, is it advised that you just probably tender in your resignation and leave the organization? Or how do you manage mm -hmm. those kind of things? Because if you have those kind of people in your team, it's very likely that you might never grow in that company. Mm. So how do, you, how do you go about that? Hmm. Well, that's <laughs> a deep question. <laughs> because I mean, I have had my own fair share oh, yeah, of sure. that. Ooh, really, <laughs> NG, <laughs> where you're doing all the work. But then when it comes to presentation time, okay, we brainstormed together. Everybody brought their A's, their B's, their C's. And I did the work. I did the research. And when it's time to present, you tell me you want to go for the presentation because you're going to be the one to get the well done at the end of the, of the, of the entire presentation. Okay, how do you handle such? Hmm. First off, you have to be very wise because God help you. The person that is going to do the presentation and wants to be at the forefront is your boss. Yeah, because many a times it's easier when it's your colleague. You can easily walk up to your colleague and say, come, please, I don't understand. We did this thing together. How is it that you want to take the shine for the entire team? Mm. Okay. It's easier that way. But when it comes to your boss, hmm, 
what I would say, this might not go that way with everybody, but what I would say is, first of just allow them first of Allow them take the shine. Allow them do what they want to do. Allow them show that they're the ones taking the glory for whatever work, work it is you've done. And then later on, you can't walk up to the HR again. Hmm. Or whoever it is that you submit to. You have a line manager. Hmm. Let them know that we actually do the work together. And that's why I'm very big on you being able to communicate in your workplace. Hmm. If you've established the foundation of communication, when, where everybody is open to talk to each other, where everybody is not afraid of being shut down, or you create such... And, and that's why I'm always big on telling employer, uh, employers to ensure that they create an environment where their employees access. are free to talk, access. You, you are able to let me in on what you're going through. It helps you thrive and it helps you develop in your career. Now, imagine a situation where you are shut down when you want to speak. Nobody's listening to you. There's every tendency that I will just stand on my resignation and go. And I'm not even going to bat an eyelid about that. But when, when, you are, when, there's, when there's already... An environment where everybody can speak, where everybody is free to let their thoughts out. It's easy for you to walk up to your line manager or to your boss and let them in and, and tell them that we actually did this work together. Mm. And so if this person continues to take shine for what I have done, I might as well just call quits and go. Mm. And if it's a very good organization, your, your, your manager it's, should be able to do something able about to it. it. Exactly. Let's take that comment, NJ, um, then we'll see. Oh, um, this comment is from Austin from Delta. Yeah. The essence of communication can't be overemphasized. Mm. No matter the career, communication is key mm. because without effective communication, dealing with a stubborn customer might boomerang. Mm. Even in religious circles, any pastor who communicates poorly in this 21st century will be put off his educated and enlightened will put off his educated and enlightened audience, no matter the anointing. <laughs> Hence, such pastors should go and acquire some communication skills. Mm -hmm. Come to the corporate world. Uh, that is why public affairs officers are engaged to speak on behalf of the company because they are well-schooled in that field. Mm -hmm. Do you know that using a word inappropriately can cost a company to pay huge money huge money liable front desk officers um image makers must continually go for orientation who are welcome back mm. thank you <laughs> <laughs> what do you say um uh, i like what he's saying yeah because like you see like you it. are the image of the company That's front really desk of in fact i feel like even the security guard mm -hmm. everyone mm -hmm. in the organization mm -hmm. should be able to communicate properly okay. at every point in time because you see there's a language because i we have been talking about what comes out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. There is a non-verbal communication okay, that I was even going to come to mm -hmm. that. How are we, how are we presenting ourselves non-verbally? Mm -hmm. That is communicating a very wrong mm -hmm. um, image of who mm -hmm. we're supposed to be mm -hmm. and it's not making us grow. Mm -hmm. How are we doing that? You know, people will say that uh, people believe you more by what you've not said than by what you said. Mm -hmm. Because... What you say sometimes, that's how a lot of people say, don't do as I say, but do as I do, do right? Do, right? As, I do say, as I say, don't do as I do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. But then again, what you don't do is even more important than what you've done. Hmm. Because in whatever it is one person said, trust me, there are lots of unsaid statements behind. So how do you ensure that you are not missing? understood when you speak because i've gotten a lot of messages gloria a lot of times this is not what i intended saying this and, and the issue is people always expect that you're supposed to understand how i feel you're mm. supposed to understand that this is what i'm trying to say mm. but how do you expect me to know that this is what you're trying to say if you do not let me know that this is what you're trying to say and your body language is not even helping helping matters, matters mm -hmm. okay so for example you're <laughs> telling me you are angry and then <laughs> Have you seen people angry and smiling at the same time? Yes, they are. They're angry at mm. you, but they're smiling. And that's why you hear, mm, this one that you're smiling at me. Mm. I know you're angry. Please, can you just let me know exactly what it is you're thinking in your heart? Okay. So when you speak, be very careful of your body language, your eye movement, your hand gesticulations, how you respond. Do you nod your head? Do you smile? Do you... Be very careful of your body language because it's non-verbal communication. There's verbal communication. Just what NJ is doing to Uwa right now. 
<laughs> so there's verbal communication, non-verbal communication, which also we, which we have underneath the, the gesticulation, body movement, and all of that, and then the written communication that we use in our place of work, emails, um, text messages, and all of that. So. What you do not say is sometimes important than what you said. So be very careful because mm. so you wouldn't be, mis be misunderstood. Let me come to you, Isi. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I was going to talk about um, verbal and nonverbal communication earlier when I said I wanted to ask a question. However, there is also another question I want to ask, which has to do with being a diction coach. What has been your experience trying to interact with individuals who are seeking to um, boost their career or enhance the growth of their career basically in an organization. What has been your greatest challenge having to interact with them and you, what is the right language to use in an, uh, an, in an, uh, in an office basically? Okay, mm, been a diction coach. I love the fact that EC talk, touched on that because it's it's quite an interesting part of what I do, helping he individuals and businesses communicate properly when it comes to addiction. I mean, when you are in a corporate environment, you know, you're supposed to speak formally, okay, but we know we are still having that discrepancy between using sir in Nigerian business environment because the white people do not use sir, ma, they call their bosses by their first names. But in a Nigerian formal environment, people still cringe a little bit when you call your boss by your first name. We have some companies that actually allow you call your boss by your first name, okay? But then it gets to a point where you know you have to put the oga, or oga this, oga that, uh, sir, ma. But the white people do do not really they do not really take that uh, quite seriously. So I I just let people know that whatever it is you're doing, ensure that you're not disrespectful. Insubordination is not tolerated in a place of work. Be very formal as possible, whatever it is that you're doing. Speak appropriately when you're in the office. So you know, when you say appropriate speaking in the office, yeah. sorry to cut you short. Yeah, well. The um, use of our native language, like mm. our native um, dialect rather, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. In an office environment, yeah. is that even proper? Even though we say that, okay, yes, we're Nigerians and all of that. But given that in a proper organization, there are different tribes and tongues there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, is it right for you to, to speak in your native language when, is it not, isn't that rude when somebody else is by your side and the person cannot even understand what it is that you're saying? Of course it's rude. It's not so right. So why do we do that? Well... It's, it, I, I feel like we just need to keep on... See that it's from a pain point. Exactly. <laughs> Who is really pain about this issue? NJ, NJ, I'm feeling me, really. I understand uh, that. I've been in an office environment where I walked in and we were having a meeting. Okay. And the meeting started and it started in Yoruba. And I'm like... What's going on here? Do you understand? Am mm. I supposed to be part of this meeting? And somewhere in between, my boss actually looked at me and said, Oh, NJ, so what do you have to say? And I'm like, I wasn't listening. <laughs> because you didn't understand the language. No, it's not whether I understand the language or not. Mm. That was not the language for this meeting. Actually. Mm. So even if I tell my, I used to tell them in my office, I said, I switch off and on. Mm. So I'm not Yoruba, I'm Igbo. So you can't start a meeting speaking Yoruba and you expect me to just have something to say in between. I don't speak Yoruba. So th at that point in time, my dictionary is... So is it okay? And you're not even only meetings. Yeah. You have your colleagues together. You're in a room. Yeah. And probably you're the only one whose uh, dialect is different. Yeah. And probably they're trying to communicate something uh, between themselves and then they, do they just switch to their dialect and you're looking and you're wondering that... Can you please at least speak English? Let's respect the fact that we are... And, and did, people do not know that they are subtly planting tribalism that way. Mm. You, you, it's, it's, it's just a subtle planting. You really do not know because people begin to say, oh, we are Yoruba, oh, we are Igbo, and then they're causing a division at work, okay? So oh, wow. English is what's proper for business environment. So please, let's just speak English. Because I've seen people being promoted because one, they can speak very good Yoruba. Huh? Easy. One quick one, please. What, what about the use of email in an office environment, basically? We use emails to interact, basically, to individuals or our bosses or our peers. What's the right tone or tonality that we're supposed to imbibe in an office environment when we're using an email? Is it okay for us to express our displeasure, especially when we are upset with a peer in an email? 
Oh, wow. Emails. Emailing is another aspect of communication for businesses because uh, when you're trying to express your displeasure in an email, in as much as you're angry, you have to tone it down a little bit because an email is a formal document and it's also a legal document. It can be used against you. And that's why you need to be very careful while you're trying to uh, express your displeasure in an email. But I just feel like, why send a mail to a colleague when you can just call the person no, and just... No, 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 no. There are some colleagues that you have to document it. <laughs> ah. yeah, the, 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 I, well, agree, I, agree, I agree. But, mm. but then again... And I agree so with you So they've also, told me this thing that my, my emails comes across as harsh. Mm, right? So yeah. I have learned to stick to the issue. Not put any emotion in the email, but de detail it the on, issue. Mm. Do you understand? It's very important because, again, we are in an environment where people can deny that, oh, this, there was this There was issue. no conversation. Do you understand? So, if you're especially if it is a colleague that you are trying so hard to correct something that has been repeatedly done wrongly. Yeah. If the person, just make sure you stick to the issue. Mm -hmm. Detail it point by point. Mm -hmm. Hello, blah, blah, blah. Write it point yeah, by point. Without emotions, mm. you'll be fine. Yes. But I, I strongly believe to always email things. Please. For evidence. <laughs> for evidence. For evidence. <laughs> Actually, with a stubborn colleague. Ha. God help you, you've had a conversation beforehand and the person is not listening. You'll see me in the email. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you so much. Good. We have to bring you back. We had an amazing time. Thank you. Thank you for thank having you, me. Thank, thank you, Thank you, thank Now, you. before we go, ensure you follow us across all our social media handles at Wayshow Africa. You can interact with us further. We had a fantastic conversation. Mm -hmm. Remember to keep liking, sharing, and commenting. Invite your families and friends to also watch and follow the conversation. Now, if you missed our quote for today here it is again communication works for those who work at it so you really must be deliberate about communication because that really can change your i mean it can advance you very quickly in your career so take pay attention seek ec seek glory they will help you out <laughs>